Well, hey, I'm here at the University of Arkansas campus, and I want to welcome you back to the Former Fans Podcast. I just had an impromptu just hang out with a fellow campus minister friend of mine, and we started talking about what pornography is doing to the guys that he disciples. And the conversation was incredible. I just stopped him. I was like, bro, why are we not recording it? This stuff is gold, and other people need to hear it. So you're stepping into an audio-only podcast where... Uh, about halfway through our conversation. We just pushed record and just started shooting the bull. So I hope you're blessed by it. I want to thank you for being here and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment if you like more things like this. Had a minister reach out to me today asking about the anonymous groups. He said it was for somebody else. I don't know if it was for him or not. But so, and then we've had our all staff email talk about how our staff can get in an anonymous group. We're just still trying to beta test that to see how it works and got two guys there. So hopefully I can put them in with the ministers. It's been great. Um, and it's opened up. I just got off the phone down there with a guy who I'm going to record with tomorrow or Friday. He is with Campus Outreach, and I recorded with his buddy already who what they're doing inside of Campus Outreach. So I told him, I was like, man, we're just trying to have the same conversation over and over and over again to normalize it yeah. because like that dude walking down there doesn't know that you can talk about this in a safe place yeah. you just got to find the right people that is literally like the enemy's greatest tool like i reference screw tape letters all the time like he literally Smart. just wants you to think that he's this cute little cartoon character holding a pitchfork that he has no power or control in your life and so it's like he wants you not to talk about it like the more the more we talk about it and the more we normalize it and let everyone know that like yeah this is this is affecting well the number well you've experienced it with the guys you're working with on the freedom fight they all say when they start watching those videos or they start doing check-ins they all say something to the effect of man i thought i was the only one yeah. like that, that how did they know that about me when he talks about what's happening inside your brain on the videos they're like i thought i was the only one and you're like no yeah. it's every dude on campus that you pass you're just I actually call them the one percenter. You're the one percent that's actually doing something about it. Mm -hmm. And so once they get that, they're like, they start feeling a little bit more blessed by God that he's fi helping them find freedom versus shame of look at how bad I am. Yeah. And God's actually been gracious to them, right? Yeah. So. One encouraging thing from this class has been they, they don't have to be convinced that they're wasting their life that's away so cool. on their devices and stuff. It's, I had a meeting with a guy last week and he's like, yeah, I know where we're going with this. I'm deleting TikTok right now. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even have to talk about it. He's like, all these students already know. Um, they just need like a little bit of a push in the right direction. And like, they need to see that other people are actually doing it. And they're not the only ones. Um, yeah. And so that's. Well, say what you just said about that winter conference, that there was a room full, hundreds of guys, many girls in there. Yeah. And the winter conference was 800 students, and we probably had at least half of all of winter conference. Are you room. serious? And it was. And they showed up specifically. What was the title of the breakout? That's a great question. I don't remember. It was about it. porn. Yeah, it was about porn. And yeah, I don't remember what it was either. But you said something important. A lot of the presentation was about stats, and they don't want stats. Yeah. They know it's a problem, mm -hmm. right? They show up saying help me yeah they want help they want help fighting it and they i don't know they don't know what to do yeah exactly they they're, they're cool and wait did you go to unite yeah, last I week did. i heard i got a lot of texts that jp was just like two minutes in talking about porn yep. how bad it is this yep. is crushing people and guess what happened after unite people gave their lives to the lord and wanted to be baptized that was my i made a little episode i think it was last week and said pastors why are y'all afraid to preach about this up front? You're not going to turn people away. You're going to draw people in and people are going to come to know the Lord yeah. in this. I mean, a good shepherd, if there's, if there's something attacking your flock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Do they know? Yeah. Or are they just trying to play ignorant because they don't want to touch it? And so it's been frustrating for me. Tell me what you think would happen if I did this because I've considered it. You know, you have the random people that have put tables up here on campus. <laughs> do the random question table thing like a random question of like prove to me porn is not bad or yes 
No, something like that would be perfect. I'm and not gonna do you lie. think people would pull? This is like the TikTok generation that like yeah. love. They love that stuff. That, they love videos like that, and they're like, oh, there's somebody doing something like that on my campus, and it's like something like just that. spark conversations. Yeah, because there's so many arguments for it. Yeah, exactly. So it's well, like you. Yeah, that was. Oh man. One well, of my one of my staff team members though, they just got back from a Pure Desire Summit conference where they actually talked about Gen Z is actually the first generation that as a majority understands that pornography hurts you. When millennials didn't really understand it, they just knew, oh, maybe it's something I don't want to do. But actually, when I first started doing ministry on this campus, I had so many people tell me, well, there's science that backs up that it's healthy for you, masturbation and pornography. And I was like, bro, no. I was like, let me show you the other science that's more biblical and more grounded in actual science because there's so many secular things out there that will tell you that it is good for you I, or it's I'm normal. What I'm trying to understand is like the seculars, the secular side of their, like why is there, why are they so defensive over their argument? Yeah. Where it's like so much so that you can go on these websites that talk about erectile dysfunction and yep. like the causes for it and you'll go and you'll look at the list of 10 and porn is not on there. It's not on there. Like what? It's not how, on there. How can they like, how can they pretend like it's not? Yep. Like what is? I did an episode on erectile dysfunction, and I looked for I looked through Mayo Clinic, I looked through Cleveland Clinic, and I looked through all these top-notch medical facilities, administrators, whatever, and none of them listed pornography as one of the top reasons for erectile dysfunction. Why? What is up with that? Like, well, take it back to spiritual warfare. Uh, Satan is not some yeah. red tights, pitchfork with horns, mm -hmm. cartoon character. He's cunning and deceptive, and he's deeply rooted and ingrained in our culture and our society. So, so who do you think my audience would be if I set up a table just with the sign and said, prove to me that porn's not bad? Would it be non-believers, or would it be believers? Or would it be believers kind of listening in? Yeah, I think it would be non-believers engaging in conversation. For sure, be, they would be the ones coming up. Yeah, it would be. Maybe an opportunity to share the gospel. Right, and then Christians would definitely be on the outskirts listening in. They would, they would love to hear that it's a conversation though. That's that is taking place. What's another question that I could have a flip card up front? Let me prove to you that porn is bad. <laughs> or what would engage the Christians? Do you think to come up to the table? Because most people don't want to touch anything. That they're like, I'm not even going to go sit at that table because then everybody's going to think I'm this way. I think way. your one question is is the right question. Okay. Yeah. You want to be there with me that day? Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to need an army of people. I might need protection. You can be in my security. I see all those muscles. Well, I want you I want you up there. <laughs> I mean, I love to hear all the stuff you got going to with all the students on campus and the other leaders. You said 50% of your group that are being discipled, at least 50, are in sexual wholeness groups probably particularly going through the freedom fight. Yeah, I think that it is really encouraging too because I know of several students that I'm personally discipling that like literally 100% have found freedom. Of, wow. Of simply just, I think they're in this culture that just knows how much they've been affected right. through COVID. Like, they're, like this is the generation that lived through COVID through high school and middle school and it's you know, they were, they were 16 coming out of COVID. That's crazy. And I think they just know the, the effects that it had on them. And they're just like, I don't want that. Like, I don't want to live in that just being cooped away, yep. like stuck behind my screen. Like, well, you know, through Freedom Fight, like the answer is community. That, the answer is that's people. Interesting. Well, you, it's interesting you said want. that. They're probably seeing freshmen that were probably really young that during COVID, maybe it wasn't that big of a stuck, and they don't they don't realize what they're getting into. But that's interesting you said that. So we have an opportunity. Yeah. With this generation, those guys that are finding freedom, what would you say is how's their spiritual growth been like? I'm not kidding. It's kind of crazy. Like God's doing God's doing wild stuff on campus right now, and those same students that have their temptations and like have they want to be missionaries like, are you let's go I'm not kidding. like they want to go they want to go sh share the gospel like they want christ to be known dude that's what i'm trying to tell 
my supervisors and all other campus ministers, if I could give you one thing, one thing that will guarantee your students start sharing their faith, would you take it? And of course, every campus minister is like, yeah. But then I tell them what the one thing is, they're like, oh. But then I tell like my supervisors, this is the number one thing keeping back people back from missions. Yeah. It used to be parents. <laughs> parents didn't want their kids to go or go on staff or uh, beg people for money. I'm doing air quotes right now. But now it's it's pornography. And what you just said is proof in the pudding. Because how can you go share the gospel with somebody when you're and talk about the freedom Christ gives when you're enslaved over here yeah. and you don't have a way out? Yeah. That's definitely Satan's trap. He doesn't want you to feel worthy. You're not worthy enough. Before you brought this up with your students or created this culture, how many do you, students do you think had these conversations or had a way to find help? Could they find help before? Is yeah. What you're saying? Could they or did they have a, a way where they're like, if I want to stop porn, this is what I would do? No. 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 And I mean, a lot of they, them were a part of churches before this, right? Right. Yeah. Even if they're being discipled like before now, they would have to be just crazy bold and like spill the beans is what they would yeah, feel like. They just have to never spill happens. the beans to their <laughs> discipler and be like, oh, I hope he doesn't reject me. I hope he still wants to disciple me. And like And an eighteen year old doesn't have the balls to do that. Yeah. So, so you gotta most come. of the time it was just they they still tried to Satan keeps telling them the lie that they can fight it on their own. Right. You told me that y'all have pushed the sexual wholeness groups extremely hard, not in a, like, aggressive or a mean way, but, like, you saw that, is it because you see the importance of it? Why did y'all choose to try to get so many guys in Freedom Fight? Yeah, I mean, for sure. That's just part of so many guys' testimonies that I've seen, including myself, of, like... That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I had a season of my life where I felt like I stopped hearing from God and it was because God was like, well, I, I already told you to do. I already told you to do this. I gave you the answers, so you didn't like yeah. it. <laughs> so you're going to keep going your own way, or you're going to try mine yet? That's you're gonna awesome. You're going to start following me, or you're going to let me, let me take control and actually believe and trust that my way is better than your way? That's or, awesome. Or do you think you got it? And so I think that's, that's part of my testimony for sure. And so I know that that's, that's the norm. Kind that's of. what I just got off the phone with that guy, and I told him, I'm like, we're just trying to say the same story over and over again, and it brings God glory. And it's just a bunch of broken people that God's redeemed, and he, He's using them to go redeem other broken people because He loves us and He's good. Yeah. So, dude, God that's likes, awesome. God likes to use His people to build His kingdom. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have any. He doesn't have a plan B. Right? Yeah. Like, this is the plan. He's not going to ride it in the sky. He's not going to zap the temptation or the desire out of you. He's going to use other people to do the hard work. But if he if he doesn't do it that way, guys like us don't grow in, in love and brotherhood and, and closeness the way we should, the way the church should be. So. so, man, dude, what's one thing I can be praying for you on campus as you are in the pit here? <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I mean, it's sunny right now. People can't see us. The waterfall on that hog statue is glistening, and it looks amazing. But this is a dark place, right? Yeah. What's something I can be praying for you? It is a dark place, but there is so much light. And the problem is there's not enough light bearers. Let's go. So I think the biggest way you can pray for me is just that I can be as effective um, as I can with the people that God's put in my life to continue to make multipliers for Amen. Him. Because yeah, there's just, there are not enough kingdom workers on this campus to fill the need of no. how many people actually desire Him. It's, it's so far. I mean, when you look at the statistics of the University of Arkansas and how many staff we have versus how many staff are at all these other campuses, it's right. like, I mean, I hurt for those campuses that don't have a bunch of staff too, but like, I mean, we could have twice as we could have twice the size of the staff team we do right now, and still not have enough. Yeah, you wouldn't be reaching. So the, the, the need pocket. is the need is so great. I mean, from the Unite event, that was ten thousand students in Bud Walton Arena. That's a third of the campus. That's a third of the University of Arkansas. That's campus. awesome. Um, People are hungry for it, like you said. Yeah, they're hungry for it, and I mean, there was. I don't. I didn't. I didn't hear the the final numbers of how many people got baptized after that, but I know. Um, 
I'm a member at Cross Church. I heard some of the numbers um, from their college pastor. He said 55 contacts um, wanting to get plugged in. Yeah, excellent. To their That's what I want to like hear. After that, and so it's. So there's follow up. There's going to yeah. be discipleship. That's awesome. Well, you, I love what you said. There's a lot of light, but not a lot of light bearers. And the interesting thing is, there are a lot of believers on this campus who have their light under a basket, yeah. as the proverb or the parable says. And it's not on the light stand. Yeah, yeah, guys like you and I, all we got to do is come and like turn up the electricity and take off the basket. And you do that through authentic community and removing the shame, uh, and you remove Satan's greatest weapon in their lives. So, dude, I'm grateful for you. Mind if I pray for you? That'd be awesome. Yeah, thanks for my brother here. Uh, I pray you just bless him. I pray you continue to work through his ministry and that you use him in amazing ways in the lives of these men he's pouring into. And if there's anybody listening to this episode, God, that you will uh, light a fire under them that they can be the one. You're going to use somebody. Why not them? Uh, But they're going to need somebody to pour into them and disciple. And they can reach out to me and I can point them in the right direction. Uh, And if there's anybody listening that there's there's just something missing from their walk with Jesus this is it you're not living on mission and I pray God you will show them how important your plan is the Great Commission to reach the whole world and you can do it by not even leaving your hometown and so God bless us as we try to serve you thank you for pulling us out of darkness so that we can put our light on a stand in Jesus name amen. amen thanks bro